Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be talking about sums of arithmetic sequences. And this is part of our video series on sequences. We are aiming this particular video at our students in math methods in grade 11 in Queensland and Western Australia. And in this particular video, you're going to find out what the rule is for a sum of arith arithmetic sequences, how to derive and use the rule, and we're going to show you a visual representation of the rule too, and then talk about what's coming up next. So let's get started and talk about what the rule is for the sum of arithmetic sequences. Well, the sum of an arithmetic sequence in this video is defined as adding all of the terms up in a single sequence to one another. It's not about adding different sequences together. So if you've got a sequence, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, we're simply adding 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. And we need a rule to be able to do that efficiently and effectively. Now, to be able to use this general rule, there's something that's very important. Our sequence must have a start and have a finish. That means it's a finite sequence. It doesn't just travel on into infinity. Otherwise, you could never add all of the numbers up. So this would look like this if we were to represent that in algebraic form. Term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, all the way up. And our last term would be term number n. And the term before that would be term n minus 1. The term before that would be 10 n minus 2 and so on. Now if you're in Queensland using the Jacaranda textbook the rule looks like this. I'm going to move on from this one fairly quickly and look at what's actually on the QCAA formula sheet in Queensland. I'm just going to flick back again to Jacaranda. You'll notice the only difference is that n is on the top multiplied by everything in the brackets and then divided by 2. It really is the same as just finding half of the number of the terms in the series. So it's just expressed a little bit differently, but they're virtually the same rule. Now, the different parts of this rule are, firstly, the subject of the equation, which is the sum of all the terms in the sequence. And then that's equal to the number of terms in the sequence divided by two. And then we multiply that by the sum of the first term and the last term. So in this case, TN represents our last term. And that's something important to note. Also in Queensland, there is an alternative rule that's on the formula sheet from the QCAA. This rule looks like this. The sum of all the numbers in the series is equal to half of the number of terms in the series, two times the first term plus the number of terms taken over one multiplied by the common difference. So if you're given a situation where you don't know what the last term is and all you know is the first term and the common difference, you can also use the, that information to find the sum of the series quickly there. Now, if you're in Western Australia, the rule looks a little bit differently for you there. We use 2a instead of 2t1. That's the only difference between the Queensland formula and the Western Australia formula is that a represents the first term. In this video, we're going to use t1 for term 1. So if you're joining us from there, please do bear that in mind. We're now going to do some worked examples. So firstly, we've got to find the sum of the first 10 terms of an arithmetic sequence. So we know that n equals 10. The first term, t1 or a, is equal to 8. And the common difference, d, is 7. So we've got our choice of two formulas. If you're in Queensland on the formula sheet, if you're in Western Australia, you've got the second one to work with. And we've got to decide which one of these is going to help us. Well, let's have a quick look. In the first one, we need the first term and the last term. We don't have that information, but we do have information about the common difference. So we're going to be using our second formula in this particular example. So that's our first decision that we need to make. And now it's a simple case of substitution. We're going to substitute into the formula n equals 10. We know that our first term is 8, so 2 times 8. We know that our common difference d is equal to 7. So let's work that through little by little. So I've evaluated 10 divided by 2 is 5, 2 times 8 is 16, and 10 take away 1 is 9. So we're showing our steps of working, which is important. And now I've got 9 times 7 is 63. I'm going to add that to 16 and get 79, multiply that by 5, and I get the sum of the first 10 terms is 395. I should write that as a statement as well because it's a worded question and there's no Sn or S10 in my formula. So that's our first worked example. It's pretty easy, right? All it is is a case of substitution. Let's do another worked example. Find the sum of the first 15 terms of an arithmetic sequence where the first term is negative 6 and the last term is negative 54. So once again, I've got my two formulas to choose from. This time I don't know what the common difference is 
but I've got the information about the first and the last term. So I'm going to be using the first formula. Now it's a simple case of substitution again. Let's put the information in. N equals 15, 15 terms. First term is minus 6, last term is negative 54. And we're going to work that through. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. Ne negative 6 take away 54 more is negative 60. Put that on your calculator. And the sum of the sequence is negative 450. So it's fairly straightforward work here. Let's look at another worked example. Worked example three, the sum of the first eight terms of is 96 and the last term is 28. What's the first term? So this time we actually have the subject of our formula and we have to do some transposing to work backwards and find our first term. So once again, look, let's look at the formulas and make a decision where we've got all the information we need from that first one except for the first term. So we're going to use our first formula here again. Once again, putting in the information that we have, simplifying that information a little bit more. And we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 4 and then subtract 28 from both sides. And we'll get that our first term in the sequence is equal to negative 4. Last example today, the sum of the first 20 terms is 2630 and the first term is equal to negative 30. We need to find this time the common difference. So once again, looking at our two formulas, our first formula is not going to help us because um, we need the last term for that one. In this case, we need to find D and we have all the information we need to be able to solve for D. So let's put that information into the formula. It looks a little bit unwieldy until we start to simplify it. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. 2 times negative 30 is negative 60. And 20 times take away 1 is 19. Let's simplify that a little bit further. We're going to uh, multiply everything. We'll divide actually both sides by 10. And then we can add 60 to both sides, divide both sides by 19, and we get a common difference of 17. And you should always check your work, substitute it back in, make sure you get the right sum and do it differently in a different way. And that way you'll be able to check your work more effectively rather than just checking for mistakes in each line of working. Okay, let's talk a little bit about where the rule comes from. I'm going to focus on this rule here today. So we're going to consider firstly a fairly basic sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And obviously the common difference between all those numbers is 1. So if I was to add up the first eight terms in that particular sequence, I come to a sum of 36. Now I'm going to show you some pretty nifty math stuff here. So firstly, let's add our first term and our last term. That's what's going on in the brackets of that particular formula. So term 1 plus term 8, 1 plus 8 gives us 9. If I do the same thing with the second term and the seventh term, so we're basically moving our way into the middle here, the sum of those two numbers is also 9. And the sum of the third and sixth is 9, and the sum of the fourth and fifth is 9 as well. That's pretty cool. In fact, this is true of all arithmetic sequences. Why don't you try it with another one maybe going up in twos or up in fives or tens, something easy. But yes, it's true. If we take that first term and we add it to the last term, then we do that with the second term and the seventh and so on, all the way into the middle, we always get the same sum. So because that's the case, what we can actually do is take a shortcut to find the sum of the whole sequence. So if we just add that first number and the last number, and then multiply that by the number of pairs that we have in our sequence, um, then we end up with our sum of the sequence. So the number, the number of pairs that was in our particular sequence was eight pairs because there were eight terms. Now, there's obviously two in a pair. Eight divided by two gives us four. So nine times four gives us the sum of 36. And that's how we derive our rule. It's kind of cool. Let's look at it with a visual representation. Same numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to represent those with some yellow dots. Now you can see that this forms a triangle when we stack the different numbers in the sequence on top of one another. So we've got one and then two, then three. Now if I was to add all of those up, we know that that's going to be 36. But let's take the last number in the sequence, which was eight, and we're basically we're flipping that triangle upside down with the blue circles. So one plus eight gives us nine. And this visually represents for us that when we add the second term to the seventh term, the third term to the sixth term and so on, what we end up with is a rectangle. Um, and we can see that here goes on into whatever size different sequence that you have. Now we've got eight rows all together and there's nine in every row. So that makes 72. So that's why we need to have the result of our formula n over two to be able to find the sum. Well, 
we got through that pretty quickly. Thank you for staying with me. Let's talk about what's coming up next. And I'm pretty excited. It's the next part of our series on geometric sequences. We're going to follow basically the same video sequence as what we did with arithmetic sequences, kicking off with an introduction explaining what a geometric sequence is, moving on to different applications, compound interest, depreciation, and population growth and decline. And then lastly, I'm going to pull some complex questions from different past exam papers and take you through how to solve those. So thank you again. If you have subscribed to our channel, we've got not just two new subscribers this week, we've actually got quite a lot more than that, but two have shared their names with us. So welcome Stormy Firm and Antoine Jean Haddad. Thank you very much for joining us here at the channel. And Best way to stay in touch with what's happening on the channel is to follow us on Facebook as well. On McClutchy Maths, you can find us there. And if you have any questions, you can either message us through Facebook or contact me directly on McClutchyMaths at yahoo.com. So once again, I'm Natalie McClutchy from McClutchy Maths. Thank you for joining me today and we'll see you next time on our next video. Have a lovely day.